Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining this session today. Well, during this session, as we are looking at the future of retail, one of the main focus during this presentation will be the customer experience, and in particular, the empathetic relationship that nowadays organizations need to really guarantee and to improve in order to enhance the customer experience and guide and lead to the future of customers and consumers. Well, by looking at the way in which ABC have seen the evolution of customer experience and see how it will progress over the years, um, IDC predicted that by 2024, empathy among brands and customers will drive organizations to adopt shared process intelligence across the ecosystem. This implies inevitably for retailers to invest more and more on empathy, meaning improving customer experience toward a higher level of customer experience personalizations, while enlarging the partner ecosystems of peers of IT vendors and external partners that can really help retailers and organizations to enhance the customer experience, the customer journey, and increase lifetime value in the long term. Well, starting from these premises, one of the aspects that we have also to consider is the way in which and uh, the fact that uh, customer experience represents a key top priority of retailers' business model innovation. Indeed, when we ask retailers this year, basically through the, our global retail innovation survey 2020, uh, how they will transform their business model, Customer experience really comes at the center of it in order to drive new revenues, but also increase KPI scores in new metrics. On the one side, as you can see, there is partner network. As I said, the importance of the ecosystem in order to really drive new revenue and increase lifetime value. And on the other side, cost structure. Because on, if on the one hand, one of the main goal of retailers and organizations is to achieve and improve profitability, on the other, it's important to reduce cost structure and keep it in line with the long-term goals that they want to achieve. Well, but let's see more in detail what we meant when we refer to customer experience. Well, within IDC, we have framed the concept of uh, you know, customer experience within and leading it to the ideas of empathy at scale as one of the main characteristics of the future of customers and consumers. When we refer to empathy at scale, we put the customer really at the center of the model the customer and the consumer and data become critical in order to uh, really enhance the digital experience. In supporting of it uh, and uh, in order to enable uh, a better customer experience and empathy at scale, technology remain essential. And the way in which we have identified the concept of empathy at scale can be read basically into three main layers. The first layer relates to the key characteristics of the empathy at scale. Let's say the conversation, so the way in which uh, uh, customers exchange this information with their brand and brand can really hold customers' data and customer information, but also journeys taking into account the different interfaces since we are not talking about anymore about uh, channels, but rather about uh, really customer interfaces experience through so taking into account the entire customer journey the way in which the experience whether online or offline will be lived by the customer will impact inevitably on the fourth aspect that is the, the one of satisfaction that can really lead to new kpis new metrics but in general to the mutual relationship that exists between the brand and the customer so moving to the second layer the aspect that we need to take into account here is really the technologies and the technology that companies have put in place. These are contextual awareness, meaning all the technologies that deliver real-time contextual awareness about the customer for the brand. These include technologies like digital marketing, advertising, but also social media and more. Frictionless engagement meaning empowering seamless engagement through different interfaces like website, mobile apps, but also mobile commerce applications. 
and active learning, supporting learning about the customers, such as artificial intelligence, advanced analytics, but also data aggregation, manipulation and management, and location technologies, and sentiment measurement through the use of technologies that allows and enables the, to hear the voice of the customers through survey measurement, such as NPS, customer satisfaction, lifetime value scores. But also we are seeing new and more advanced technologies like real-time sentiment sensing through video analytics or facial expression. And this, once we have seen the technology, will lead us to the third layer that is represented by business outcomes and business outcomes that are driven by customer experience. We start from predictable communications, meaning increasing the engagement between the brand and the customer during all the steps of the customer journey, lifetime value between both the brand and the customers, but also um, applied intelligence in order to use and customize and personalize the experience for the customer. And last but definitely not least, mutual trust, meaning the relationship that needs to be created between the brand and the customer or the consumer, as customers want to be able to trust the company with their data. But on the other side, company also want long-term relationship built on trust where they become trusted partners with the customer. So having presented and seeing all together uh, the evolution and the um, aspect that characterize empathy at scale, and now let's see the evolution of the customer journey model. And well, data shows us how things have changed in the last three years. One of the key aspects that we can see is that the steel retailers and many of the organizations continues to be on the latest three stages of the customer journey model, meaning um, dynamic personas, segment one, and real-time contextual customer experience. But an interesting point is that at the end of the day, a really point of differentiation in terms of competitors that retailers need to focus on, and the data demonstrate that retailers are really focusing more, is related to real-time contextual customer experience. And as you can see, this is a process and this is an evolution that is not incremental, but basically retailers and companies can reach the highest level of maturity, depending on the target investment that they do, depending on the specific long-term goal that they fix. But what is important is that once they reach the highest level of customer journey model, they can really make the difference in the market compared to competitors. And this is a trend that in the last two years we are seeing is growing more and more among retailers. When we look at customer experience more, more closely, uh, we need also to consider the implication that customer experience has and uh, um, in terms of implementing what we call the retail commerce platform. Uh, when we refer to retail commerce platform, of course, we do not refer to a monolithic platform, but something that comes hand to hand with the business and the, the, um, and the need that retailers set up for their own goals. Meaning uh, what you can see on the blue boxes are the core capabilities of the retail commerce platform, among which there is customer experience, together with commerce services, content optimization services, and order fulfillment services. Everything is leveraged by AI and machine learning analytics, but also surrounded by end-to-end -end security, development integration system services through APIs that allows the integration of the core capabilities together with other services, such as enterprise services, com consumer services, data services, coming from product and customer, as we have already seen, but also from IoT, meaning about, for example, thinking about the connected store and the external network, the ecosystem, so partners, peers, and uh, all the aspects and all the other information that, are, that surround the organizations. What is interesting to see more specifically when we ask retailers, particularly when they will focus their efforts in implementing the retail commerce platform, well, what appears clearly from the 57% of retailers is that they are going to put customer experience services 
among their key priorities for enabling the, the retail commerce platform. And this is evident, especially when we compare these kind of services to commerce, to content optimization, to order fulfillment. So it's clear that customer experience remain a top priority and that retailers should invest on customer experience. Another important aspect that you have also to consider is that when we um, talk about all the core capabilities, that these are possible, and especially by leveraging AI and machine learning analytics, only if companies can really access to data services. And uh, this is a key aspect and the crucial aspect that we are continuing to see in retailer are facing in terms of challenges when it comes to consolidate customer data and leverage advanced analytics. So for these reasons, if you can see from this image, what we have done is to um, represent a conceptual retail data architecture in which information comes from the different interfaces into a unified info lake that will process structured and unstructured data coming from customers, product, inventory, third party, and can be um, collected, but also integrated and processed anytime by AI and machine learning analytics and will compose inevitably the data services with product and customers, IoT and external partners that we have seen are at the basis of the retail commerce platform. So it's a key essential once we talk about customer experience to um, point out the importance of the data. And this comes even clearer when we look at the retailer's top three action plans to achieve best customer experience. Because one of the first uh, and the first um, priorities that they put in place is related to consolidating the customer data and leveraging advanced analytics first, followed by evolving loyalty programs, as we have we've seen talking about satisfaction, talking about uh, further improving engagement, loyalty should be there, even beyond, for example, reward. And third, delivering contextual interaction as the enterprises live and stay in a more dynamic system and need to interact with the ecosystem. This is basically what we mean when we talk about contextual interaction, knowing also the customers, their needs, and their expectations. So having said this, uh, we want to point basically your attention uh, before leaving you on the three main key calls to action that according to us, you need to uh, really take into account and consider now that you are in a process in which targeting investment are particularly relevant and need to be strategic, especially considering nowadays uh, the importance and the impact that the current pandemic has having, We're talking about the digital experience, We're talking about the future of retail and more in details, the future of customers and consumers. Well, what is important in this sense and at these stages is to really benchmark yourself. And in order to identify where you are in terms of a customer experience personalization maturity, we have identified it into a maturity scape, uh, the different stages for which retail customer experience personalizations can take place. It can go from ad hoc uh, um, initiatives to something at the highest level that is more optimized. And what is important in this sense is to evolve and uh, uh, progress within the organizations and company-wide culture of customer experience personalizations. So it's important inevitably for you to really understand where you are now, but also to benchmarking yourself against the other, against your peers, but first of all, against your long-term goals, because this will allow you basically to really understand what goals you want to achieve, or what are the efforts that you have to do and you have to put in place in order to achieve those goals. And uh, in order to do so, this leads us to the second action, uh, that is the need to design a new customer experience architecture. Well, the best way to do so, according to us, is to really take into account your key action, meaning the dynamic experience services that could go from alert, identify, personalize, execute, monitor, and analyze customer data, but also customer 
needs and preferences based on the information basically you had, identifying the key dynamic experience services on the one end, and then supporting those services and the evolution or implementation of these services with the other way technologies. Well, the crossroad, let's say, or the better um, assessment of your efforts and long-term goals will lead basically to this, um, similar to this chart, in order to really identify what are the key technologies that can better help you to enable customer experience and to improve then customer experience at scale. But last and definitely not least, you need also to consider a third element. I already mentioned it through the course of this presentation today. Yes, when we talk about customer experience, we need to take into account the context in which the customer, the consumer is or they are, but also the ecosystem. As the interaction that exists between the information that you have of the customer and the ecosystem will enlarge and will improve the quality of data that you can collect. At the same time, enhancing partnership with suppliers, with peers, allows you to really face the consumer demand volatility and the changing market trend and achieve the specific DX programs, use cases, and overall your digital roadmap in a more systematic way, not just focusing on the short term, but also on the mid and in the long term. I put here some examples of retailers that are already doing that in order to uh, pointing and focus on specific use cases, such as omnichannel marketing and advertising, that as we have seen, remain critical when we talk about empathy at scale, but also sustainable environment optimizations and that uh, inevitably touch different retailers across the different subsegment. That can go from food and grocery uh, to, for example, fashion and apparel. And also, a third aspect of use cases that we are seeing retailers are investing, are currently investing on, especially during uh, this latest month, that are related and it is related to omni channel order orchestration and fulfillment. So, trying to really integrate your supply chain in order to improve your customer experience. So I would leave you with, uh, with these three actions in mind in order to really um, uh, push you to think where you are at the moment. And for any questions and, of course, any feedback, please do not hesitate to come back to us. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Steele. I'm part of the retail industry team here at Google Cloud. Uh, and I'm delighted that you could uh, join me for uh, a few minutes to talk about the uh, dynamics that we're seeing in the retail industry right now. It is definitely uh, an unprecedented time for retail, and no one needs me to tell them that. It's an unprecedented time for everyone right now globally. But we've definitely seen a number of impacts of COVID-19 in the retail industry and creation of this new reality, this new normal, uh, for retailers to think about and consider as they build out their strategy. I think the first thing that's been really interesting for us is, you know, based on conversations with our customers in retail, but also based on research that Google has access to and research that Google conducts, we've seen a number of different trends occur. Firstly, the acceleration of existing trends in retail. So, you know, rapid growth of e-commerce, more and more customers stuck at home and therefore shopping online. Expectation that uh, the shopping experience will be consistent across channel and you know, also that will be highly personalized and highly convenient. You know, consumers increasingly wanting to see uh, you know, convenient experiences that match with their lives depending on whether they're locked down at home or starting to shop again, but thinking about how to shop more safely. So this real uh, shift into creating new experiences quickly that power that omnichannel experience. We've also seen a rapid increase in the number of smaller brands in the market, those without physical stores or perhaps without the history of a traditional retailer, spinning up new e-commerce sites and creating additional competition and pressure for traditional retailers. 
So there's definitely this acceleration of current trends. And I like this quote that, you know, we're seeing three years of transformation happening in the last three months. And I'm not sure whether those numbers are exactly correct, but we've definitely seen an increase, a rapid increase in the rate of innovation in retail. I think the other uh, pillar that's been quite interesting is, you know, a number of new trends emerging. You know, consumers increasingly focusing on health and safety, the new uh, focus on how do they shop from home, thinking about value to an increasing extent as consumers come under more and more financial pressure. And even in the physical in-store environment, consumers very much wanting to shop in new ways. So thinking about my personal safety in the physical environment, thinking about how do I book a particular slot? How do I make sure everything is there before I decide to go and visit a store? So some new trends, some new paradigms for consumers and for retailers to deal with. And then, of course, unpredictability. You know, no one knows quite what the future will hold. It's it's still a very volatile retail world, particularly in supply chain, very difficult to understand the demand from consumers, whether they'll be stockpiling, whether there'll be certain categories that are particularly on demand. Also, what the long term financial impact is of this crisis um, and what that means from a global perspective, all additional pressures uh, faced on uh, faced by retailers. So we are very much facing this new reality uh, in retail right now. and it hasn't been consistent for all retailers. So depending on which part of retail you find yourselves in, the impacts of the pandemic have been very different. So for example, in grocery retail, we've seen soaring demand, a big shift into e-commerce, and almost a need to scale up quickly, build the operational capabilities, hire new team members, and really scale e-commerce in a way that that industry hadn't seen before. But in fashion and apparel, Consumers locked down at home, not needing new outfits, not thinking about shopping the latest fashions, and therefore a big negative impact in those cases. And so we've seen one pandemic, but many effects on retailers. And alongside that, consumers are facing their own pressures. Consumers particularly faced with financial pressures in many cases. So we've seen optimism drop. We've seen lower incomes being reported. We've seen consumers say, they're expecting their financial outlook to be impacted for a number of months into the future, worrying about their income, worrying about their jobs. And so that's a tough time, a tough place for retailers, because that leads to lower intent around purchase in retail and a real focus on those commodity, those essential items, and less on the discretional luxury items uh, that many retailers uh, look forward to. So difficult financial times. But we've also seen alongside that, a real desire and willingness to experiment with new ways of shopping. So in data that we've seen, more than 50% of surveyed shoppers tried a new shopping service for the first time, more than 25% went online to purchase something they would normally buy in store, even when the stores were open, and 50, more than 50% are trying new experiences like curbside pickup, click and collect, drive through, lots of new experiences that retailers are creating. So it's quite interesting to see this real dichotomy on one hand, tough financial challenges, but on the other hand, a real willingness to experiment, to try new ways of shopping. And in reality, we don't know what the future will hold. It's very difficult to say how many of those new behaviours will turn into a habit. Which of those behaviours that we're seeing customers experiment with today will become the new way of shopping, the new normal for the future? Apparently, it takes 66 days to form a habit. Uh, that's how long. And of course, you know, we're only a short period of time into the pandemic and all of the impacts of the pandemic. And for sure, we have more than 66 days to go until we figure out what the world looks like. And so those new habits are being formed all the time. Consumers are changing their habits. We're very fortunate working in Google to have access to some incredible research uh, capabilities and um, great insights from some of our teams across the Google business. And by really analyzing that insight and research data, we've been able to see some of the trends as they've happened through various different phases of the pandemic. And you can see almost from left to right, some of the behaviors that we've all experienced, and I'm sure many of us have exhibited these behaviors ourselves too, uh, over the period of the pandemic. So we've definitely seen, particularly at the early parts of 
the crisis, consumers wanting to regain control, stockpiling, buying more store covered items, really focusing in on those essential items. We've seen consumers focusing on everyday basics, you know, wanting to make sure that my family, my loved ones, my household is protected, is insulated from the challenges, has everything they need to continue to be healthy and happy. We've seen a real focus on bringing the outside in uh, as a potential habit. You know, if I can't go out and socialize, how do I socialize through technology? How do I access nature and leisure activities through technology? So this real move to home being the center of consumption in the family and therefore in retail. And of course, increasingly, e-commerce being a key part of the shopping experience. E-commerce penetration has grown dramatically over uh, the months of 2020. And I don't expect that to drop back to previous levels when we come out the other end of this crisis. I'd expect consumers who have shopped online for the first time, have enjoyed their experience, wanting to stay in that omnichannel world. And of course, it's not just about e-commerce for shopping for delivery to home. It's about e-commerce also connecting with physical stores. So thinking about those connected experiences. And who knows which of these habits will become more permanent habits in the minds of consumers, but we're definitely starting to see lots of changes in the way that consumers shop and, and engage with retailers. In Google Cloud, we have invested significantly in our retail proposition. Retail is a really important industry for us overall uh, in Google. And we've focused very much on partnering with retailers all around the world to help their digital transformation, to help power innovation, and to help focus the uh, investment and solution strategy around areas that matter most to retailers. When I talk to retail customers right across uh, Europe and, and the rest of the region, I often hear some consistent themes coming through from those retailers. How do we capture our share, or more than our fair share, of growth in these challenging times? How do I use data to drive value? You know, lots of retailers talk to me about having access to data, but not always knowing exactly how to drive data from it. And finally, help me to be more efficient, help me to drive costs, costs down, uh, and help me to simplify the operations in our business. And so our retail strategy focuses on those three specific areas uh, of investment and those three specific areas of priority for retailers. So firstly, thinking about capturing digital and omnichannel revenue growth. We know that there is a rapidly changing environment right now, and we know that retailers are really thinking about how do I power my e-commerce platform to make sure that it is reliable, you know, that I don't get downtime, that I don't have outages that prevent my customers from shopping with me, even when we're seeing demand start spikes. How do I make sure it's secure? As more and more consumers start to shop online, how do I make sure that this is an environment that's secure for those shoppers? How do we scale quickly? Using the power of Google Cloud to scale up for those spikes in demand, but at the same time to smoothly scale back down for those lower periods. And also, how do I have flexibility? You know, how do I move from perhaps an on-premise set of capabilities where I'm having to pay for that uh, capacity every day of the year through to a more flexible arrangement where we pay for what we need and have that ability to scale quickly. And so cloud uh, offers that opportunity for retailers to really develop their capability in that way. And in addition, we're focusing in on how do we help retailers to build new experiences quickly. You know, so gone are the days of two to three year digital transformations in omnichannel or e-commerce platforms. Retailers are now looking at how can I iterate quickly? How can I build new experiences in weeks, not months and years? How do I test those with my customers? And ultimately, how do we continue to learn and grow as we build out our e-commerce capability? So for example, our vision search capability, allowing consumers to scan a photo or take a picture of a particular item and connect that to the retailer's product assortment, to the retail catalog, is a great example of new technology powered by Google Cloud, helping the consumers to connect with retailers. So we're focusing in very much on digital and omnichannel revenue growth. The next focus area and investment from Google Cloud is uh, consumer-centric data-driven strategies. Lots of retailers having access to data, but this frustration at times of not quite knowing how to drive value from that data access. 
Uh, so we're focusing really on helping to retailers to manage large volumes of data, to organize, store, and analyze that data at real speed in, in real time often, and to be able to use machine learning to automate and power increasingly accurate forecast to drive the business forward. And this is particularly in the area of customer uh, experience, providing personalization at scale in real time, but also thinking about how can we use data powered by machine learning to really drive our operation. So for example, predicting consumer demand, forecasting where to place inventory, forecasting assortment and new ranges, all problems that retailers have grappled with for many years, we're now bringing new solutions powered by Google Cloud to make that more efficient and more accurate. And then finally, the third of the key focus areas that we're thinking about right now, and retailers are really talking to us uh, as key focus areas, is driving operational improvement. But this is about thinking about how do we reduce cost, free up investment for innovation and to drive new experiences, simplify the operation for our colleagues as well as for our customers, and to connect the channels in ways that are seamless uh, and offer the maximum convenience to our consumers. And so, you know, we're building out solutions here to partner with our retail uh, customers to do just that, to simplify, to reduce complexity. You know, a great example is our contact center AI solution, which helps uh, answer consumer questions in real time using AI, frees up the human agents to answer more complex queries or to drive higher value customer engagements and allows consumers to get a much more speedy and convenient answer without having to wait in line or wait for a human to be free to answer that query. And it's particularly relevant right now in the uncertain times that we're in, where you know the simple questions like, when is a store open? Do I need to book a slot? You know, what precautions are being taken? Are often being asked at scale by consumers who are uncertain about what to do and can be answered by technology and making the business more effective. So these are the three areas that retailers are really focusing in on in terms of priorities when they talk to us. And these are the areas that we're investing heavily in to build solutions that help retailers step change their digital transformation and drive efficiency and opportunity in their business. And in addition to thinking about those three areas, we offer the opportunity for our customers to really get the best of the whole of Google. So our Google Cloud platform is the same platform that powers Google. Google Search, YouTube, Maps, powered by the same technology that we offer to our customers. We're also connecting all of the different parts of Google for our retail customers. So for example, connecting YouTube, Maps, Android, Chrome, Search into our platform so that retailers can access the best of those products as part of their relationship with Google Cloud. We're investing heavily into AI and machine learning. This is a real area of focus for Google and has been for some time. And so helping retailers to really start their first foray into these areas and build out their capability in this space. And in addition, investing into industry aligned solutions like the examples that I talked about previously. So retail is a key focus industry for Google Cloud and we'll continue to invest and grow and build our capability to help our retailer partners to uh, drive their digital transformation and drive their business. Hope that's been useful and interesting. Thanks for taking the time to listen and uh, thanks very much.